Hello everyone, welcome back sa ating YouTube channel. So for this video ay tatalakay naman po natin ang Bill of Rights of the 1987 Philippine Constitution which is a part of the Career Service Examination under sa General Information na Subtest. But before anything else, shout out po kay RV Fernandez which is a gold member of Nomo Studio. If you want to support Nomo Studio, you may join our channel. And this will help me as a creator and at the same time will encourage me to make more videos. You may visit the description box below for the join link and you'll see the membership perks there. And now let's go back to our topic which is the Bill of Rights of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. We will have a 15 item questions with 4 multiple choices at ipapaliwanag natin ang bawat sagot. So we have question number one, what is the Bill of Rights? A. The first ten amendments to the Philippine Constitution. B. The section of the Philippine Constitution that outlines the basic human rights of all citizens. C. A document separate from the Philippine Constitution that outlines the rights of citizens. Or letter D. None of the above. You may pause the video to have more time answering the question. So the correct answer is letter B, the section of the Philippine Constitution that outlines the basic human rights of all citizens. The Bill of Rights po are uh, intended to ensure that every citizen in the Philippines is treated with dignity and respect. At dapat na irespeto nga ang kanilang uh, basic human rights at dapat protektado ito ng batas. The Bill of Rights po is considered as one of the most important parts of the Philippine Constitution since it will guaranteed the protection of individual rights against any violation or abuse by the government or other entities. Letter C is not correct since it is not a document separate from the Philippine Constitution kasi ang Article 3 po kasama po siya sa mga articles ng 1987 Philippine Constitution. So hindi po siya separated na document. Next, we have question number 2. Who is entitled to counsel? Under the Philippine law, A. Only those who can afford to pay for a private lawyer, B. Only those charged with a capital offense, C. Only those who are indigent or cannot afford the services of counsel, D. Every person who is arrested, detained, or under a custodial investigation shall have the right to counsel. Under Philippine law, lahat po ng tao na inaristo, i-detained or under custodial investigation ay may karapatan po na magkaroon ng kanyang sariling abogado. At ito po ay nakasaad sa Article 3 or the Bill of Rights Section 12 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution which states that any person under investigation for the commission of an offense shall have the right to be informed of his right to remain silent and to have competent and independent counsel preferably of his own choice. Kaya nga ho, may tinatawag tayong Miranda Warning which means na you have the right to remain silent. Ibig sabihin yung tao ay may karapatan na manahimik or to refuse to answer to any questions asked by the police or any other law enforcement officer. Kasama po sa Miranda Warning yung uh, the right to have an attorney. Ibig sabihin yung person who has been accused of a crime has the right to have an attorney present during questioning. And if they cannot afford of an attorney, one will be provided by the government at no cost. Next, we have question number three. What is the main purpose of the Bill of Rights? A. To protect the rights and freedoms of citizens from the government. B. To protect the rights and freedoms of the government from citizens. C. To ensure that all citizens pay their taxes. Or letter D. None of these. The correct answer is letter A, to protect the rights and freedoms of citizens from the government. Since the main purpose of the Bill of Rights is to protect the fundamental rights and freedoms of individuals against any infringement or abuse by the government or other entities. Since ang uh, Bill of Rights po is uh, intended to be a shield or a protection to individuals' rights from being violated. Next, we have question number four. What is the main purpose of a search warrant? A. To ensure the safety of law enforcement officers during a search. B. To give permission to law enforcement officers to enter a private property. C. To protect 
the privacy rights of individuals against unreasonable searches and seizures. D. To allow law enforcement officers to confiscate any items they believe to be illegal. Ang tamang sagot po ay letter C. To protect the privacy rights of individuals against unreasonable searches and seizures. Kasi nga po ang uh, search warrant, it is a legal document issued by a judge in which uh, inaallow nito ang mga law enforcement officers like police to conduct a search for a place, uh, person or thing uh, to look for an evidence of a crime. However, kahit nga yung search warrant is, uh, is only issued if there is a probable cause na kung saan ay uh, they believe that a crime has been committed and the evidence uh, na kanilang hinahanap is located in the specific place to be searched. At ang uh, search warrant po, pakatandaan may limitations po ito. Ibig sabihin kung ano lang yung nakalagay sa search warrant, yun lang yung hahalughugin o yun lang yung hahanapin mo in a particular place. Ibig sabihin, uh, let's say for example, uh, second floor yung nakalagay sa search warrant, second floor ka lang magsisearch. Hindi pwedeng second floor nakalagay sa search warrant, pupunta ka pa sa ibang mga floors. And also, ang search warrant din po is only valid for a limited period of time. Uh, it is usually a few days from the issued of a search warrant. And yun nga no, ang search warrant it is a powerful tool that allows law enforcement officers to conduct searches for evidence of a crime. Question number 5. Which of the following is not considered a form of cruel or inhumane punishment in the Philippines? A. Flogging B. Forced labor C. Electric shock or letter D. Solitary confinement Choose the letter that corresponds to your answer. Please note na kapag sinabi nating flogging, ito ay isang uh, corporal uh, punishment in which yung mga tao na nagkasala ay uh, hinahampas ng latigo o pamalo. Ang flogging po ay ginagamit sa kasaysayan bilang isang paraan ng kaparusahan sa iba't ibang klase ng krimen kagaya ng pagnanakaw, adultery, blasphemy, at iba pa. And so, it is important to note that flogging is uh, illegal and uh, it is prohibited in many countries and under international human rights law, it must not used or it should not be used as a form of punishment since ang hinahanap natin sa choices is yung hindi considered as a form of cruel or inhumane punishment. Therefore, letter A is not the correct one. So as what we can see in the choices, letter B, forced labor. Ito lang po yung choice na hindi nagkukost ng uh, cruelty or inhumane punishment sa isang tao. Kasi kapag sinabi nating uh, cruelty, it, is, uh, it refers to a behavior or actions that cause unnecessary suffering, harm, or injury sa isang tao. Kasi um, ang yung choices A, C, at D, ito yung talagang intentional harmful sa isang tao in which nagkukos siya ng unnecessary suffering, harm, or injury. Actually, in many countries, including the Philippines, ang corporal punishment is uh, actually prohibited in uh, schools and other settings. Instead, meron po tayong mga alternative disciplinary measures like yung positive reinforcement and counseling which are recommended to promote positive behavior and prevent harm. Next, we have question number 6. Which of the following statements is true about the right to presumption of innocence in the Philippines? Choose the letter that corresponds to your answer. The correct answer is letter C. The right to presumption of innocence is absolute and applies to all types of criminal cases. Kasi po it is considered as a fundamental human right and is recognized under Philippine law. It applies to all types of uh, criminal cases regardless of the nature of the offense or the identity of the accused. And remember that the right to presumption of innocence is um, protected under the Philippine Constitution. And any violation of this right may be considered a violation of due process and uh, may result in legal remedies for the accused. Question number 7. Which of the following is an example of speech that is not protected by the freedom of expression in the Philippines? A. Criticizing the government's policies. B. Inciting violence or rebellion. C. Expressing an opinion on a religious belief. Letter D, Engaging in Peaceful Assembly. The correct answer is letter B, Inciting Violence or Rebellion. 
kahit na po yung uh, Philippine Constitution natin, uh, garantiyan niya na may freedom of expression ng bawat uh, tao and the right to free speech. But there are certain limitations and restrictions to these rights as provided by law. Kasi kapag sinabi po natin inciting violence or rebellion, it refers to a speech or an act that uh, encourage or promote the use of force, violence, or unlawful means just to overthrow the government. Pero, ayun nga ho, ang government natin is uh, restricting the speech which is considered to be a threat to a public safety, public order, or public morals. And uh, speech that promotes sedition, rebellion, or incites violence is not protected by the freedom of expression. Uh, while letter A, yung uh, criticizing the government's policy, actually it is uh, generally protected by the right to freedom of expression. Kasi nakasaad ito sa Constitution of the Philippines that guarantees the right of every person to freedom of speech, expression, and of the press. Kasi ang uh, criticizing the government's policy, it is a form of uh, political expression that is protected under the freedom of expression. Kasi nga sa Pilipinas ay may karapatan ng mga mamamayan na magpahayag ng kanilang mga opinion sa mga patakaran, opisyales o aksyon ng ating gobyerno. Letter C, uh, expressing an opinion on a religious belief. It is a protected under the freedom of expression sa Article 3, Section 4 of the 1987 Philippine Constitution. So long hindi po siya nakakasama o hindi po siya uh, nagbibigay ng certain reasons na magkaroon ng uh, national security threats, public order, public morality. So protected ang freedom of expression under po sa pag-express uh, natin ng mga opinion sa mga religious beliefs. Ibig sabihin po nito meron po tayong karapatan na magbigay ng ating mga opinion even to religious beliefs. Pero ito nga ho ay subject to limitations. If ever na meron na po tayong naibigay na mga hate speech or it can threat to public safety, abay hindi na po yun protected under the freedom of expression. And also with letter D, engaging in peaceful assembly, which is very obvious na ito po ay protected under the freedom of expression. Ngunit, sabi nga sa tanong, ang hinahanap natin, yung hindi protected. That is why the correct answer is letter B. Question number 8. Which of the following is not a right of the accused during trial in the Philippines? A. The right to appeal the verdict. B. The right to confront witnesses. Letter C. The right to have evidence obtained illegally excluded from trial. Or letter D. The right to decide on the sentence to be imposed. Yung letter A, the right to appeal the verdict, ito po ay isang uh, karapatan ng isang akusado to challenge the decision of a lower court by bringing the case before a higher court for review. Dito sa Pilipinas, the right to appeal is one of the most important rights of the accused during trial. And also, yung right to confront witnesses, which is a fundamental right ng isang akusado dito sa Pilipinas. Ito po yung uh, kumbaga pagkukross-examine sa isang witness to testify against the accused in court. And also, with the right uh, to have evidence obtained illegally excluded from trial. Ibig sabihin po nito, hindi pwedeng gamitin yung mga evidence na nakuha by um, illegal means. Ibig sabihin yung mga unlawful search and seizure, evidence obtained through coercion, or evidence obtained without warrant or probable cause. So the correct answer is letter D, the right to decide on the sentence to be imposed. Since hindi po karapatan ng isang uh, akusado na magbigay ng sariling desisyon, but the power to impose a sentence is vested in the judge. After a trial, kapag ang isang akusado ay guilty of a crime, the judge will then determine the appropriate sentence na based sa na-established na mga facts. At ang akusado po ay may karapatan pa rin to present evidence or arguments in favor of a particular sentence. Pero yung final decision or verdict, it is given by a judge, not by an accused. Question number 9. What is prior restraint in the context of freedom of expression in the Philippines? Choose the letter that corresponds to your answer. And you may pause the video para magkaroon ka ng mas mahabang oras. The correct answer is letter A, the government's power to regulate the content of media before it is published or aired. Bakit ano ba yung prior restraint? 
Kasi kapag sinabi nating prior restraint, uh, it refers to any action taken by the government or the employees of the government uh, to prevent the publication or dissemination of any material. Kumbaga para siyang uh, isang form of censorship, no? Uh, censorship that involves the suppression of speech or expression before it uh, it is published. This only means that uh, our government cannot prohibit or restrict the publication or dissemination of any material unless otherwise uh, mahuhulog siya sa yung mga tinatawag nating recognized na uh, exemption of uh, free speech. Let's say for example, yung uh, statement mo is very libelous or it can cause violence to other people, then that uh, statement or that speech may be censored by the government. Hindi siya ipapapublished or hindi siya pwedeng i-aired sa mga televisions and other media. Next, we have question number 10. Which of the following is an example of speech that is protected by the freedom of expression in the Philippines? A. Making false and defamatory statements against someone. B. Encouraging the overthrow of the government through peaceful means. C. Using hate speech against a particular race or religion or letter D. Distributing sexually explicit materials to minors. So, it is very obvious no, na yung letter A hindi talaga yan protected kasi gumagawa ka ng mga defamatory statements against someone. So, it is not protected with the freedom of expression. And letter B, uh, encouraging the overthrow of the government through peaceful means Kasi nga po kapag sinabi natin encouraging the overthrow of the government through peaceful means, kumbaga uh, ito yung acts of promoting or advocating for the removal of a government or political system without resorting to violence, coercion, or any other unlawful means. Kasi sa napakaraming mga bansa po, especially in the Philippines, the right to peaceful assembly and free speech is protected by law and it is enshrined in our constitution. And also, yung letter C at letter D ay hindi po yan uh, protected by the freedom of expression. Using hate speech, again, what, uh, as what I have said earlier, na yung mga kumbaga nagkukosya ng violence or defamatory statements or yung uh, kumbaga nagbibigay ka ng mga masasamang uh, salita sa ibang tao ay hindi po yun uh, sakop or protected by the freedom of expression. And yung letter D, of course, napakahalata naman siguro or it, it is quite obvious na yung pagdidistribute ng mga sexually explicit materials to minors are strictly prohibited by the government. Next, question number 11. Which of the following is required for a warrant to be issued in the Philippines? A. The consent of the person to be arrested. B. A reasonable belief that a crime has been committed. Letter C. The approval of the President of the Philippines. Or letter D. A confession from the person to be arrested. Correct answer is letter B, a reasonable belief that a crime has been committed. Kasi po ang pinakaunang requirements na tinitingnan ng isang judge para makapag-issue ng isang warrant, probable cause. Kumbaga ito yung, uh, ang probable cause kasi, it is a reasonable belief na based on facts or circumstances na talagang may nangyaring krimen. Ganun po yun. The court ma must have probable cause to believe that a crime has been committed. And uh, that the person or property to be searched or seized is connected to that crime. And please note na hindi na po kailangan ng consent of the person to be arrested. Kasi kung magkagayon po, uh, aaristuhin mo siya tapos hinihingan mo pala siya ng consent na aaristuhin mo siya. Nako, pagbalik mo niyan at magbibigay ka na ng warrant sa kanya, hindi mo na yan makikita. Hindi mo na yan mahagilap. So, hindi po yan tama yung letter A. And letter B, yun nga yun yung correct answer. And letter C, the approval of the President of the Philippines. Hindi na po kailangan. We don't need the approval of the President. Kasi yung pag-issue uh, po ng warrant of arrest or uh, search warrant is trabaho po yun ng judge. And yun nga, bago siya magbigay ng, o mag-issue ng warrant yung judge, kumbaga uh, titingnan niya muna kung may probable cause talaga. And letter D, a confession from the person to be arrested. Hindi na po natin kailangan na pag, uh, mag-confess yung um, person na aaristuhin mo. Kasi kapag sinabi natin confession, kumbaga ito ay isang acknowledgement of a fact or allegation na it is true and proven. So kumbaga magko-confess siya or aaminin niya. Hindi na po kailangan. And now let's proceed with question number 12. What are the two types of due process in the Philippines? 
A. Procedural due process and substantive due process. B. Civil due process and criminal due process. C. Administrative due process and judicial due process or letter D. Common law due process and statutory due process. Choose the letter that corresponds to your answer. Dito po sa Pilipinas, we have two types of due process, which is uh, procedural due process and substantive due process, which is the correct answer is letter A. Kapag sinabi po kasi nating substantive due process, uh, it refers to the requirement that laws or government actions must be fair, reasonable, and not arbitrary. It means that the government cannot pass laws or uh, take actions that violate the fundamental rights and freedoms of individuals, uh, such as the right to life, uh, liberty, and property without a compelling reason to do so. Uh, halimbawa po ng substantive due process, if ever yung government natin uh, magpapasa sila ng isang batas that prohibits all forms of speech, this only means na it will violate the substantive due process because it will infringe or, yes, it will infringe the fundamental right to freedom of expression or freedom of speech ng isang individual. At kapag sinabi naman po nating procedural due process, it refers to the requirement that the government must follow fair and reasonable procedures when taking actions that affect the rights of or interests of individuals. Ibig sabihin nito, yung individual po must be given notice of the government's actions. Uh, Kung baga, uh, may karapatan siyang uh, mapakinggan and a fair and impartial hearing before any action is taken. Example nito, if the government were uh, to uh, search or seize a person's property, it must provide notice to the person and give them an opportunity to challenge the seizure in court before the property is taken away. Ang pinakamagandang halimbawa po nito ay yung mga warrant natin like warrant of arrest or search warrant kasi yung uh, person to be arrested or a property to be seized, uh, kumbaga, um, nai-inform mo na sila bago inaaresto at nabibigyan sila ng karapatan na manahimik, binibigyan sila ng karapatan na magkaroon ng abogado, yun po yung procedural due process. Kumbaga, ini-inform mo na sila kung ano yung mga actions to be taken. Next, we have question number 13. What is procedural due process in the Philippines? Choose the letter that corresponds to your answer. So, ayun nga no, na-mention na natin kanina sa question number 12 about sa procedural due process na dapat ang uh, person to be arrested ay manotify mo na sila of the charges against them at dapat mabigyan mo na sila ng opportunity to be heard. So, the correct answer is letter B. Next, we have question number 14. What is substantive due process in the Philippines? So, ayan nga no, I guess you already know the answer kasi sabi nga natin kanina sa question number 12 nung inexplain ko yung tungkol sa substantive due process na dapat i-check muna ng government natin if ever yung ipapasa nilang batas uh, kung talagang constitutional, kung uh, it does not really violates the fundamental rights of a person. Therefore, the correct answer is letter C, the process by which a court determines whether a law or government action is really constitutional. Last number, we have question number 15. What is due process of law in the Philippines? A, the right to a fair and impartial trial. B, the right to be notified of the charges against you. C, the right to be heard in court or letter D, all of these. The correct answer is letter D, all of this. Kasi yung A, B, at C po ay pasok sa tinatawag nating due process of law dito sa ating bansa. First is yung the right to a fair and impartial trial. Pinakauna dito is yung presumption of innocence. Ibig sabihin nito, every person is presumed to be innocent until proven guilty beyond reasonable doubt. And pangalawa, yung right to counsel na magkaroon ka ng yung uh, abogado and right to be informed. Kumbaga, uh, may karapatan kang uh, manotify sa mga charges na la laban sa iyo. Ibig sabihin, may karapatan ka na malaman kung ano yung mga nalabag mong batas o yung ano yung krimen na ginawa mo based sa mga evidence na ipinirisenta sa korte. 
And at the same time, may karapatan ka rin na uh, mapakinggan sa korte. That is why meron tayong paglilitis sa Pilipinas. That's all for this video. And I hope na may natutunan po kayo sa video na ito. At kung hindi ka pa nakasubscribe, click that subscribe button para notified ka when new videos are uploaded. If you want to support Nomo Studio, you can join our channel by visiting the description box below for the join link. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.